Hello and welcome to another episode of Behind the Scenes. And today we have a very special guest from Cystic, Michael. Hello and welcome to the show. Hello, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> so now, what have you for us? What did you bring to the show? Uh, so I was going to show off a project called Falco. Uh, Falco is uh, one of the newest projects in the CNCF sandbox. Uh, and what Falco focuses on is detecting abnormal behavior in uh, container environments. So uh, if all of a sudden a, a database container starts making outbound connections to the internet or somebody's uh, spawned an interactive shell inside of a container, uh, how can you detect those things? So we kind of think of ourselves as, uh, you know, you have image scanning at the beginning to make sure that you're not getting vulnerabilities into the environment. Uh, and then we think of ourselves more at the runtime environment where we can actually actively at least notify you about things. Um, the interesting thing about Falco and why we kind of wanted to join the CNCF is there's two areas that we want to try and improve uh, and working with the community or broader community would be important to do that. So the first one is right now Falco only looks at um, system calls. Uh, so it has a kernel module that can uh, take these system calls and turn them into an event stream. We want to have more event streams to where you can begin to apply the rules. Have dev raise uh, Kubernetes audit events, so you uh, you would have uh, you would point your Kubernetes cluster to send audit events as a webhook over to Falco, and then you can write rules around that to um, um, uh, detect activity in the in the Kubernetes environment. So all of a sudden, somebody does a kubectl exec. And then you can send uh, that audit event to us and we'll trigger an alert based upon it. Okay. And then the second thing that we really wanna try and improve is what you do with those events. Uh, so right now uh, the events are, or the alerts are sent uh, to a file, uh, standard out kind of all your kind of standard locations, uh, but still very basic. And we wanna expand out where we can actually send those alerts to. So adding in things like generic webhooks uh, direct support for things like NATS or Kafka or other message servers uh, as well. And then that way you can have uh, people that are listening to those events or those alerts come in and then take action. And that's what I was going to give a quick demo of uh, today. Cool. Let's let's have a look at that demo. Cool. Sure. So let me just start sharing the screen. All right. Uh, so just to kind of show a slide of uh, what we're going to see here. Uh, so we have Falco. Uh, Falco runs I, I uh, as see a... the... Oh, yeah, now it comes. Yep, yep, yep. Now I see it. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Just a little, little bit of lag. Um, so Falco runs as a daemon set in Kubernetes, so it'll run on every single one of your nodes. Uh, it'll insta install the kernel module and load it in. It'll also talk to the Kubernetes API to pull back uh, metadata information about, like, you know, mapping that a container belongs to a particular pod, which belongs to a particular service, which belongs to a particular namespace uh, and so forth. Uh, so what we'll do in this demo is uh, we're gonna detect a, a normal event. Uh, that event's gonna get pushed off into NATS. Uh, and then we have subscribers in NATS, which can do uh, a variety of different things. So uh, in this uh, environment, what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually delete the pod where we saw the offending action take took taken place. Uh, we have a number of these playbooks um, that, we uh, that we've published on the Falco security slash Falco GitHub repository. Uh, and you can have a function fire to do things like taint a node, uh, delete an offending pod, uh, use network policy to isolate the pod. So maybe you want to go back and right. do forensics audit later, uh, send a notification via Slack and so forth. Cool. And Nats, uh, for the viewers who are not that familiar with it, it's another CNCF project. And what it exactly is, was the role in here? What's the role in this setup here? Uh, it's a messaging server. Uh, mm -hmm. So it allows us to just uh, kind of fire and forget the message over into the messaging mm -hmm. server. Uh, and then you can have subscribers subscribe to that message queue or that topic, as Nats calls mm -hmm. it. Uh, and then the nice thing is, is you can subscribe to different priorities of alerts. So uh, you could subscribe to all alerts uh, or you could just subscribe to specific alerts. And then that way, 
uh, what will happen is is the subscribers to the topic can then will get that message uh, off the NAT server and then they can take action on it. So it's basically the the mechanism to send the messages. Right, and, and theoretically that could be replaced by Kafka, for example. Yeah, theoretically it could be replaced by uh, any okay. any messaging server with the same behavior. Um, okay. One we're actually working on is um, you know using cloud services because mm -hmm. uh, every cloud provider provides uh, you know right. a messaging pub sub service. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. And what what's the role of uh, so, being uh, being another uh, uh, one of those very interesting serverless frameworks? What's, what's Kubeless do? Let me turn off my do not disturb. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> no uh, so um, Kubeless is basically allows us to take action. So let me actually show you the function that'll fire. Right. Uh, so it's just allows us to load up a very very small function to take action. Uh, and so you can see here what we have is uh, this function right here is the one that will fire this delete pod. So we get the event in off of uh, NATS. Uh, we just parse some data out of it to get the priority and then also the output fields. And then if the priority is equal to critical, then we're going to go and delete the actual pod uh, right here. So it just gives us a really easy way to run these functions to kind of take action on our Kubernetes cluster. Right. So we are looking here at a Python file that essentially is executed in serverless and is uh, sorry in kubeless and is mm -hmm. essentially the consumer of one of these topics reacting to a one alert. Yep, exactly. Okay, cool. cool. Yep. Um, and just to give you, a, uh, I'll just show you some of the rules that we're going to trigger in this environment. So, uh, and kind of give you an overview of of how rules work. So, make this a bit larger. So. We have uh, some custom rules that we created. Uh, the first thing that we created is what's called a macro. So this is what uh, the rules conditions look like. Um, and since what we were doing here is creating a macro, this allows us to use this macro over and over in other locations. And this filtering expression will be substituted and replaced inside of the engine. So if uh, I needed to, maybe we're uh, having more than one label on our pods, or maybe there's a additional criteria that I wanna add in here. I can change the macro and I don't have to go and change all the rules. Right. So you can see here that we're identifying what a node uh, front end server looks like uh, off of some Kubernetes information. And then we have a rule here that says if any of the node front app, uh, node app front end servers uh, spawn a process and it's running inside of a container, uh, so container ID does not equal host, and the proc command line contains this string stratum TCP, uh, then we want to throw a critical alert. Uh, so what will happen is this output will get put in the alert, uh, and then this proc command line and the container info will also get populated as well. And these rules, they are specific to Falco. They are like the internal way of representing when to fire. Yep. They're, uh, they're internal to Falco. Uh, they leverage uh, Falco's sister open source project, uh, Sysdigs filtering language, mm -hmm. uh, as well as Falco also borrows the kernel module from that project as well uh, to instrument the kernel to get the information out as as well. Uh, so if you're already familiar with Sysdig, then the rules will actually look uh, right. pretty familiar to you. And, and just uh, maybe that's a stretch, but theoretically, would it be possible to express these things as OPA rules using OPA to, to you know, essentially it's kind of like a policy, right? If you, if this and this happen, mm -hmm. is that something like, would that that's, even make sense or? Uh, that's something that actually the CNCF talk brought up to us as a, a possible ah. point of integration uh, to fit better into the pod native community. Yeah. Uh, so that's, we haven't started investigating that just yet, uh, but that's definitely something that we want to uh, talk more with the OPA team about. All right, then uh, let's let's have a look at the demo. Sure. Uh, so just one other element I'll show you about rules real quick. You can also create lists. Uh, and these are essentially like a, a variable or an array that you can use. And then you can see that we define the list there, and then we're gonna use that list and saying, if anybody makes a connection to one of these ports, uh, uh, then then we'll match the condition. Yeah. All right. So let's jump into the demonstration. So, and uh, Damon, since 
make essentially sure that that uh, the agents are running on each of the nodes and then how does the actual configuration these rules get spread up yep. is there a config map or how, do, how does how does yep. that i'll show you that here real quick okay cool. uh, so we have a config map uh so if i do a kubectl git config maps uh, and you can see we have this falco config uh config map and that actually consists of everything that's in this falco config directory and so we just drop our falco yaml which is the configuration file uh and then the rules file now this rules file uh these are rules that we actually ship uh out of the box uh let me remember how to type uh so there's an, about 30 rules that we ship out of the box uh that are kind of around common uh common kind of container best practices there's also lots of macros that we define uh as well so that you don't have to worry about how uh to define that somebody's open something for writing you just need to use our macro and we maintain that for you nice and then uh in the local rules you'll be able to use any of the macros that we define as well so uh i could have uh specified some of those rules actually i did specify some of those rules uh when right here this spawn process is actually something that's come from the other file the one that we showed all right so uh, i've already created the config map as you can see so the next thing i just need to do is uh do the kubectl create on the daemon set we also ship this as a helm chart as well so if helm something that you're using uh yeah. then you can use the helm chart that we provide and if i just do a kubectl get pods uh we can see that their pods are up and running uh one is completed it shouldn't be in that state there we go it's stabilized now um and then i'm going to go and um, to run a kubectl uh, logs uh, and i just have to do one thing here wide uh because i want to look at the logs at the right machine so i just need to make sure i know that information dash o wide all right so x9d so this is the machine i believe all right so we can see that it's loaded it's uh come up uh it found the kernel as well and it's also loaded the appropriate kernel module uh for the platform uh what it will do is that it will uh attempt to um uh build the kernel module if it can't find a pre-compiled one that we provided you can also specify a url where maybe you've built your own kernel module uh and you can go to that url and we'll download it and pull it in which is kind of a bit more sane from a security perspective it, Downloading kernel modules off the internet is probably not what you want to be doing, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, why not? You know, you know, and, and, and hearing that uh, it's about kernel modules, I, I'm assuming that the uh, the daemon set here is is launching privileged. Parts. Yes, it is. It is launching yeah. privileged. Um, if you don't want to run it as a privileged pod, then you could build it into your container or your your host template. Uh, mm -hmm. and just run it as a, a long running daemon in your host template, uh, if you'd rather do it that way. All right. So, uh, down here, I've got the logs from Falco. So we should see if any alerts come in, uh, mm -hmm. down here, what we're doing is we're watching our front end application server. Uh, and what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to jump onto that particular machine or that particular container. Um, the, the front end to get that right, the front end kind of like simulates now that this is where the attack comes in or the, where the bad things happen or. Right. Yeah. Happens. So this is a, a node JS container, uh, mm -hmm. and it's just running a, a basic application and we're just going to get into it. And well, you know, in theory, what would actually happen is you would have somebody come into node JS mm -hmm. and exploit mm -hmm. it and then start to run things. Um, and the challenge is, is you may not necessarily know that container ever got exploited because the container right. goes and dies. Uh, uh, and gets descheduled by Kubernetes. And so you need to be able to have something that's going to let you know that something happened that you might want right. to go and do forensics around. Right. Um, oh, I need to specify one thing. There we go. 
right. So somebody spawned a shell on the container, and you can see right away uh, that we got a notification that uh, somebody spawned that shell. Uh, and this is just a notice, but these notice uh, these notice alerts can actually be pretty useful. What we see a lot of end users at Falco doing is is they'll log all of these notice events, and uh, they're logging a lot of information, but they push it back to something like Elasticsearch. Uh, and then they can use that right. to later go and do auditing to actually figure out what's going on in the environment. Right. 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 Yeah. So th th this notice uh, we got because we have a rule in there that says if someone exec or creates a shell in that mm -hmm. kind of front end pod, then I want to want to be informed about that. Yeah, it's actually a default Falco rule that basically huh? anytime that anyone uh, uh, oh. spawns an interactive shell inside of a container, will fire a nice. an alert. Uh, which is kind of something that you kind of want, right? Uh, you know, you do need to sometimes get into a pod to do yeah. uh, troubleshooting and debugging. Um, but at least you now know that somebody went and did that. Right. Uh, so I'm just going to touch a file. Uh, so I'll just touch a fake file uh, underneath bin. And you can see there, once again, we got an alert. Uh, and this time, this mm -hmm. is a priority error uh, that somebody uh, created a file underneath of known binary directory, which is a common thing that you would do if somebody's installing software uh, mm -hmm. after the container launches uh, and the, the container no longer becomes really <laughs> immutable. Uh, yeah. And then also, uh, you know, if the machine or if the container is exploited and somebody's trying to install a rootkit uh, and replace your binaries and other things like that as well. Right. All right, so let's see if we can get this rule to trigger. I've had 50-50 luck with this demonstration. Uh, <laughs> <Fingers crossed. laughs> so we'll just put stratum TCP, and it doesn't matter that uh, um, curl doesn't know about this protocol. Remember, that rule that we were looking at is anytime that we see the proc command line containing stratum TCP, uh, mm -hmm. we want to fire a critical alert. Um, you really, it, this is something that's uh, specific to cryptocurrency miners, so it's very rarely that someone would have that string in their command line. So if I just hit <laughs> enter at this point, uh, you that's can see, sure enough. Well done. Uh, <laughs> it did go and kill the pod, and if I look down here, you can see that uh, it terminated, and then the new one uh, is coming up, and the container is created. Um, we should see the new one come up here in just a this second. Is not, this is not just... Um, a, a warning or whatever notification actually pulls out the, the pod under your feet, right? It yeah. Actually, just yeah. says no, you're not allowed to yeah. do that. And off you go, right? Yep, right. exactly. Awesome. <laughs> uh, and then you can see a few other alerts that we got as well, uh, and these are just kind of notice events around Kubernetes is spinning up a new pod, so we get a lot of information. But then you can see right here that right. possible miner was ran inside of a container, uh, and our rule fired as we expected it to. And do you actually get to see where this person came in from? Would you see? Uh, you wouldn't necessarily see where the person came in from. Mm -hmm. uh, you could write some rules around networking. Uh, and we mm -hmm. do have a few rules around networking uh, mm -hmm. that allow you to, to detect abnormal network connections and other things like that as well. Right. Um, we are, with the Kubernetes audit events, uh, if this was the scenario where you did a kubectl exec, you would actually be able to see who did that kubectl exec by getting that audit event. And so you would have one alert that is the kubectl exec, and then all the commands that I ended, then you would get this notice that a shell was spawned, and then right. anything that violated a rule after that as well. And then the nice thing there is you can go back and kind of say, okay, well, somebody ran this kubectl exec, and then these six commands were ran, or these six policy violations happened. It must be the person running the kubectl exec. Hmm. Wow. Wow. This is uh, really fascinating and, and everything worked. So that's good. <laughs> yes, that's good. Awesome. Uh, so you can find us at falco.org uh, is the project's website. Uh, as I said earlier, falco security uh, slash falco uh, is our GitHub repository. And in the integrations directory, uh, we have this, uh, the uh, Kubernetes using a daemon set, so how to deploy Falco on uh, Kubernetes using daemon set. Uh, as I said, there is a Helm chart um, as well. And then there's this Kubernetes response engine. And this Kubernetes response engine allow, uh, basically allows you to set up what I just demoed. Um, and we have uh, some playbooks, and these playbooks allow you to do a little bit more. 
So we have playbooks around deleting the pod. Uh, there's playbooks around isolating the pod with network policy as well. Uh, and then we also have some other ones, Slack, uh, where you can send a message to Slack or you can taint uh, the Kubernetes node so it's not scheduled anymore. But if you fear that somebody has broken container isolation, you might want to keep that Kubernetes node around so you can go and do forensics on it later. Yeah, maybe I'm gonna gonna write a playbook around the honeypot then. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if, if it's not yeah, that's actually one thing that we've done. Uh, we have a couple of blog oh, posts, cool. a Cystic blog, where awesome. uh, we've just left a, a Kubernetes dashboard out on, on, wide open on the internet and see what we find. And, and how long did it take? <laughs> How long did it take? Uh, uh, it was a matter of a couple of hours, I believe. Yeah. Oh, I, that's yeah. Uh, yeah. interesting or scary. <laughs> so for everyone out there, don't leave your dashboard. <laughs> Please. Or, or at least use Firefox and uh, yes. at least get, get notified. Uh, awesome. Um, like from a community perspective, what, mm -hmm. like, you know, people watching that and go like, oh, awesome. I want to try it out. I want to you know, benefit from it, but in the other direction, what can people do, where and how, like, have you got meetings, like, you know, Zoom-based virtual meetings or uh, a Falco con, or like, where do people go if they have yeah. questions, if they want to contribute, if they want to be yeah. part of that? That's a good question. Uh, I probably shouldn't have uh, turned off my screen sharing. <laughs> Here, let me share again. Uh, another thing, uh, so we have a Slack channel. Uh, if you go to okay, slack.sysdig.com, cool. mm -hmm. uh, you can enter your email address and join. Uh, and then there's a Falco channel uh, inside of that. Uh, we haven't started doing community meetings uh, just yet. Um, I think maybe within the next three months or so, uh, towards the towards the beginning of the year, it's something that we'll start looking at doing more of. Um, and then, as I said, uh, you, you know, GitHub issues is a good place uh, to communicate with the development team as well. Uh, and if people are wanting to get involved in the project, uh, I think the the way that most people can contribute a lot of value is is adding in rules uh, and helping us with the rules. Um, mm -hmm. We do have some rules around, um, and we haven't moved this repo yet, but we have some. Let me just find it uh, around kind of common applications. And these rules allow you to basically say, okay, this is what we expect from Apache when Apache spins up. So we expect it to listen on these ports. We expect it to be running these processes. Uh, we expect it to be using these directories. And if it's using anything beyond that, then that's kind of a non-standard Apache deployment. Uh, so cr helping us create a, a library of rules like that would actually be uh, a great way for people to get started with the project. Um, it is written in C++ and Lua uh, as well, Thanks. so any of the integrations that we would do are typically in those languages uh, as well. And I'm going to make a wild guess. You're probably around at KubeCon in Seattle as well. You I am. Uh, yeah. We're, uh, we'll be at KubeCon Seattle. Uh, we have actually uh, a couple talks, uh, an intro to Falco, uh, and then a Falco deep dive as well. Uh, we're also at KubeCon Shanghai doing those two talks as oh, well. Wonderful, wonderful. That's amazing. That's really great, Michael. And um, well, thanks a lot for for showing us the demo and and uh, going into all these details. Is there anything else you want to uh, share or or want to let people know the context of of Falco Enterprise? No, I don't. Uh... Uh, no, not really. Um, you know, I think one other thing that we're going to start looking at on the open source side, uh, I mentioned the sister project, uh, Sysdig. Um, we're, the new thing that's coming in Kubernetes 113 is ephemeral containers. Uh, and ephemeral containers are basically a, a container that you can bring, bring up uh, inside of a pod to do debugging. Uh, and we think Sysdig is actually something that could fit in uh, pretty well there. So kind of continuing the charge towards working more with the cloud native community and the Kubernetes community, that's probably one thing that we'll be looking at uh, doing next. Awesome. Well, again, thanks a lot uh, for your time. And I take it you're in Scotland these days, right? You're... I am in Scotland. I'm at Open Source right. Summit right now. Yes. All right. Well, then enjoy the wonderful Scottish weather. It's probably as nice as here in Ireland, where are you? I'm it's currently. actually uh, nice and sunny, kind of cloudy, but uh, <laughs> super windy, super windy. <laughs> At least it's not raining. Yet. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay. Yeah. Thanks a lot again uh, for your time, and uh, I'm personally looking forward to to uh, start playing around with Falco and, and also start contributing. Um, but thanks a lot, and hopefully see you um, in uh, Seattle at at the uh, All right. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Michael.